What's up, Bulls fans? Welcome into the Bulls Report. My name is Patrick Seatman. And coming up on today's show, we're going to be going over an absolute wild Bleach Report trade idea where they had this man right here, Zach Levine, heading to the Denver Nuggets. Yes, the Denver Nuggets. I'll show you guys those trade details here in a second. But before we dive into that, I actually want to give a huge shout out to all the real ones who have hit that subscribe button so far in the month of August. As I was looking at the analytics across all NBA channels here at Chat Sports, and the Bulls report is actually second in subscribers gain, only uh, trailing 76ers now with 318 subs. So I would love it if we could end up at the end of August, a top of the August sub battle. So if you guys are new here and aren't subscribed to the channel, lock us in and hit that sub button. But let's dive into the trade as this is a blockbuster, juicy, whatever buzzword you want to use for a mega trade going down in the NBA. This would be it. Where it would have the Bulls receiving Michael Porter Jr. and Zeke Naji, And then the Nuggets would receive Zach Levine and a 2029 first round pick swap, top three protected. I think that would be a disaster for the Bulls. And that's also why I think the number one reason why this trade won't go down is that the Bulls can't and also won't give up draft capital. Like, I think the only first round pick the Bulls are willing to give up um, in terms of attaching to Zach Levine in a trade would be the Portland Trailblazers pick because that is a lottery protected deal. I don't really think that's going to come to fruition uh, and eventually being a first round pick. So I could see them attaching that pick. I don't think the Bulls um, should or will attach any of their own future draft capital to move off Zach Levine. And, you know, I just don't really think it makes too much sense. And also in that trade, like Michael Porter Jr. for Zach Levine, in my opinion, those are two bad contracts. I don't necessarily see why the Bulls are the ones that have to attach a potential very valuable pick in that deal. But this is what Zach Buckley at Bleach Report, who suggested this trade, had to say um, from the Nuggets' perspective, saying the Nuggets, the Nuggets have lost a handful of reliable veterans since winning the 2023 title and largely tried to replace them with in-house proven options. If young players such as Christian Brown and Peyton Watson aren't ready for a major role expansion, that will only increase the burden shouldered by Nikola Jokic. Now, I don't think this trade has any potential of going down before the season starts. But let's just say the Denver Nuggets roll in the next season and maybe they're, I don't know, around 500, maybe only five games above 500. I could see them getting super, super aggressive at the NBA trade deadline because they want to take advantage of Jokic's prime. And that is right now. You never know how long uh, a championship window could be, especially when you have a top three player in the world type of talent in Jokic. I expect them to be very aggressive. And this is what Buckley had to say about Levine potentially fitting next to Jokic. The three-time MVP might appreciate having another shot maker and shot creator of Levine's caliber. As brutal as his contract is, his offensive punch is powerful. Injuries kept him from finding traction this past season. But prior to that, he was on a four-year run of averaging 25.5 points, 4.5 assists, and three three-pointers while posting a 47.9, 39, and 83.9% shooting slash. And offensively, this makes a lot of sense. Like, I will say, if I had to pick a perfect guard to be next to Nikola Jokic, it's probably either Jamal Murray or Zach Levine. And I think Levine would thrive because he's a great off-ball player. He's great with also the ball in his hands as well, being that pick-and-roll operator. And if you would pair him up next to Nikola Jokic, I will say that would make a whole lot of sense offensively. But again, there's two sides to the basketball court. And could you roll out Levine and Jamal Murray as your backcourt? Could you be able to guard in the Western Conference at a high enough level to reach the NBA Finals? I don't necessarily think so. But you would probably average 125, 130 points a game if you were to add um, Zach Levine to that unit. So I actually do think this trade makes somewhat um, sort of sense for the Denver Nuggets. But again, I don't really love it for both teams. This is what Buckley had to say on the Bulls trading Zach Levine in this deal, saying Chicago, meanwhile, seemingly doesn't want to sacrifice assets in a Levine trade. No duh. But that's probably the only way to get rid of them and start fresh. Here, at least, the cost is only a protected future swap. Since Porter's own contract isn't great, and the return is two players who can fit with the franchise's finally adopted youth movement. Now, I'll make this point around Zach Levine. If the Bulls aren't able to trade him before the start of the regular season, 
I say you just bench Levine. I see no reason to roll him out there with Kobe White, with Josh Giddy. I would just sit him on the bench because of this. It is incredibly risky to play Zach Levine this season. Let's just say you roll him out there. First 30 games of the season, and he plays like he did this past year. It is only going to be more challenging to trade him. And I don't believe he can do a whole lot to up his trade value in the first 30 games of the year. So if you aren't able to trade Zach Levine, you just bench him. You don't play him and just hope another team you know, takes a flyer on him in the trade market. But let's look back and see what Levine did this past season because you know, it was definitely his worst year out of the past three. Um, obviously, injuries and just overall fit with his teammates were a big reason why he wasn't as efficient as he once was. But in 34 and a half minutes a game, only 19 and a half points, 5.2 rebounds, 3.9 assists, and he wasn't really the most efficient basketball player. 35% from downtown, that was his lowest over the last five seasons. Now, looking back at this trade, I think it makes probably more sense for honestly, the Denver Nuggets to do this deal instead of the Chicago Bulls. But again, I don't love this trade for either of these groups. I will make this point. Bleacher Report, this is the time of the offseason where they're just, you know, throwing stuff at the wall, hoping it lands. And I guess the Bulls and Nuggets were, you know, two of the victims here. So we'll dive into Michael Porter here in a second. But you guys let me know. Would you accept this trade? Give me an A for accept or a D for decline down below in the comment section. Also, if you're a Nuggets fan, tune into this video. Would you do this deal? Curious to see what y'all have to say. Now, coming up next here, if this deal were to go down, what should the Bulls do with Michael Porter Jr.? I'll give you guys my thoughts on that here in a second. But first off, got to give a massive, massive, massive shout out to today's presenting sponsor, and that is Prize Picks, America's number one daily fantasy sports app with over 5 million active members. Now, if you guys use the promo code CLNS, we will match your first deposit up to $100. Prize picks is the easiest and most exciting way to play daily fantasy sports. Unlike other apps, on prize picks, it's just you against the numbers. All you do is pick more or less on two to six player stat projections and watch the winnings roll in. Get in on the daily action with your friends and become part of the prize picks community today. Now, I already have a lineup for week one of the football season where I'm rolling with the more on Caleb Williams passing yards set at 236 and a half. And then I think the best wide receiver in the National Football League, Justin Jefferson, will top 89 and a half receiving yards. And then I think Caleb's going to be finding DJ Moore a lot week one. So I'm going to take the more on his 63 and a half receiving yards. But hey, if you guys want to fade my picks or ride with my picks, I just suggest you guys do so with prize picks. So download the prize picks app today. And use promo code CLNS for a first deposit match up to $100. That's code CLNS on prize picks for a first deposit match up to $100. Prize picks, run your game. So how would MPJ fit on the Bulls? Because I actually think he's one of the few players in the league where you could just drop him on any single roster and he could fit in seamlessly. As he doesn't need the ball in his hands, he's a plus defender on that side of the court, and he's one of the best spot-up players. He, well, he actually is the best spot-up player in the entire National Basketball Association. This is what Buckley had to say about the Bulls landing MPJ. Porter is an overpaid or is overpaid for a shooting specialist, but six foot ten shot makers who provide volume and efficiency will forever intrigue. Sliding into an offensive ecosystem with a less defined hierarchy might allow him to tap into the creation skills that had draft analysts so intrigued back in the day. Now, I agree. I think Michael Porter, if he would come to the Bulls, you would see the best version of him in his career in terms of him being a primary creator. I think a spot-up play will obviously take a hit since he's not playing next to Nikola Jokic. But if the Bulls land MPJ, you know what I would do? Send him to another team ASAP. You try to get that first-round pick back that you sent to the Denver Nuggets. And, you know, I think a contender would be very interested in the, you know, talent that Michael Porter Jr. is. But we talk about bad contracts with Zach Levine all the time. This dude's on a bad contract as well. And, you know, I fully blame the new CBA for this. I think too many of these, you know, B, B-plus level players are getting paid like all-stars. I mean, you got Michael Porter Jr. making 36, 38, 41 million dollars over the next three seasons. And listen, this guy's a great basketball player. Like, he can fit into any system really seamlessly. But is he supposed to be making 40-plus million dollars? 
you know, jury's probably still out on that. But, I mean, man, I mean, the last two years, he's been great. I mean, 17 points a game, almost 40-plus percent from three over the last two years. He's a big body, six foot ten. He hits the glass really hard. Obviously, there's kind of jokes out there that he's one of the worst playmakers um, in the league, but that's just not really his game. And even dating back to that 2020 year, in 31 minutes a game, this guy was almost averaging 27 on 54 and 45% from downtown. And listen, I'm a big fan of Michael Porter Jr. I think he's a great basketball player. He obviously has winning intangibles, already being an NBA champion, but the Bulls don't need him. Like, the Bulls are in a position right now where you don't, even though Michael Porter Jr. is still young, like, you just can't throw him in this lineup because it's going to stunt the development of these four guys. Like, the one thing that, you know, really has me remaining optimistic about this Bulls future is these four plus Kobe and Io. And, you know, Modest Bozellus, still a huge question mark on what he is. But even Julian Phillips, Daylon Terry, like if you want anything out of those draft picks, you cannot have Michael Porter Jr. come in here and just take away shots and take away minutes from those two. And the same thing with Patrick Williams. You would hope Patrick Williams become a player like Michael Porter, where he can average 16, 17 a game on, you know, decent efficiency and also be a plus defender on that side of the field, or that side of the court. So I just don't see any reason to bring in Michael Porter. I, I think it would just really hurt the development of these guys. So I would want the Bulls to flip him, very similar to how the Trailblazers flipped Drew Holiday last year. But what about Zeke Najee? This is another player the Bulls are getting in the deal. This is what Zach Buckley had to say about him. Najee doesn't have much to show for his first four seasons in the NBA, but he's still a 23-year-old, 2020 first-round pick and should be capable of filling a rotation role for a team that isn't facing such such extreme win-now pressure as Denver is. Now, I like Ze Zeke Naji. I liked him coming out of Arizona. But again, is this really a – is this a player where it's moving the deal on any trade? Not at all. Like, this would just be a throw-in guy where, you know, you would hope you could develop into something. But, you know, if this is like the throw-in piece, you're just not really, you know, too, too happy about that. But he only averaged 3.2 points per game. 2.2 rebounds, and 0.6 assists this past season. But, hey, if you guys didn't make it to the end of today's show, give me a real one down below in today's uh, comment section. Show sure you guys some extra love down there if you guys do so. And then also give me a follow on Twitter if you guys haven't already. That's the handle right there, tweeting about the NBA, NFL, everything, and the whole nine uh, on X. So give me a follow over there. See you guys next time. Go Bulls.